What's good, y'all? Dr. Trey Hunter. Now's Wednesday Wednesdays, and the topic of the day is going to hit home for a lot of women. Today, we're going to talk about PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. What is actually causing it and what you can ultimately do to reverse it. Believe it or not, it is reversible. But with that being said, I am not your doctor. I am just a nutritionist and I understand the human body. But if your doctor got you on spirolactone or metformin as of right now, continue to keep taking it until he or she tells you to get off it. All right, so we already know about the menstrual cycle. There is the menstrual phase, which is day zero for you. Then there is the follicular phase, day seven to 14. Then there's the ovulation phase, 14 to 21. And then there's the luteal phase. When you're actually menstruating, your estrogen levels and your progesterone levels is at a all time low. It's at baseline, all right? But what's gonna happen is your body's gonna start producing luteinizing hormone to start producing estrogen for your body. But here's the thing. In order for your body to produce estrogen, it needs androgens or testosterone. So believe it or not, ladies, yes, your body produces testosterone. And not only that, you always have more testosterone in your body than estrogen. But what's happening is men have 10 times more androgens or testosterone than y'all. So women naturally carries a little bit more estrogen than men. Men naturally produce more testosterone than estrogen. But when it's all said and done, we both have more testosterone in our body than the majority of the other hormones. When you're finally out your menstrual phase, now you're in your follicular phase. This is the phase when your body's starting to grow the eggs or your follicles, right? But what's happening is your follicles are growing, but then you don't ovulate. And you already know, in order for your body to ovulate, you need to be at an all-time high when it comes to your estrogen. Something is inhibiting your body from ovulating. What could it possibly be? It's going to be insulin. If you're somebody who has PCOS, that means you're in a state of hyperinsulinemia. And what's happening is, in your body, your body's producing a testosterone. Your ovaries are not able to convert the testosterone to estrogen. That's what your body needs to go to the next phase to ovulate. But what is causing our insulin to be so high all the time? Your lifestyle. What food you are putting in your body usually causes PCOS. Just to give you some statistics, PCOS didn't really exist in the 1950s. PCOS didn't really exist in the 1960s. PCOS is at an all-time high now, 60 years later. Why? This generation of humans... Americans, to be specific, grew up in a time of convenience and processed foods. Processed foods didn't exist in 1950s. Processed foods started to come out in 1968. And now all they did is tweak it. They optimized it so it can taste better. And now instead of the average person eating whole foods, real foods that existed before me and you, we're starting to gravitate to processed foods, baked goods, enriched flour, pasta, etc., and the issue now is your body is spiking this insulin throughout your entire life. It started when you was a kid. Your mom probably had pizza Fridays. We had McDonald's at least once a week. And I grew up in a household where our first meal was cereal or oatmeal. <laughs> That's going to spike your insulin. The second meal, we're going to get it from school. We get in school lunch. So it's going to be pizza and fries if it's my choice, right? And then you come home and then your parents is finally cooking the best meal for you. Protein, a starch, rice, corn, peas, anything like that in a vegetable. But if I had Doritos during the day, if I had a cookie during the day, if I went to the candy lady or if I went to the ice cream truck and grabbed some Skittles or some ice cream, plus the two meals that I already had earlier, I told my body four times out of five to stay in a hyperinsulinemic state. Does that make sense? But your body's so resilient, it's not going to take one incident for that to happen. It's not going to take one year for that to happen. It takes a decade just about of you continue doing the same thing not paying attention to your insulin levels for you to accrue pcos but pcos is ultimately insulin resistance of the ovaries just like diabetes is insulin resistance of the liver just like dementia is insulin resistance for the brain because if your insulin levels is high that means you got a lot of glucose in your system it's kind of like you have a suitcase right and you're about to go to Barbados, but you're about to go to Barbados for two weeks. Women like to overpack a little bit. Y'all got four different outfits for one day, all right? So imagine if you keep throwing clothes in a suitcase, right? If you throw about five outfits, you could close the suitcase, no problem. You're throwing 10 outfits, okay. Now you can still close the suitcase, but now you got to put a little bit more strength to close the suitcase. 
Now, just imagine you try to put 20 different outfits and four different shoes inside the suitcase. Now, you probably got to sit on top of the suitcase just to close it. That's what's happening when it comes to insulin resistance. Your body is able to take in some sugar at a time, some glucose at a time. But when you process the sugar, when you have in flour, when you have in cookies, when you have in ice cream, your body is taking a boatload of sugar at one time and it wasn't anticipating it or it wasn't made to have that at that certain time. In your suitcase analogy, either A, you can get a bigger suitcase or B, you better pray to God that it don't bust open. But now let's say you was able to fit your 20 outfits and your four shoes in a suitcase, but now you close it and you need your boyfriend to close it and everything, but now the zipper starts to break. The suitcase itself is malfunctioning and that wasn't his intent, but it was because of your choices. You continuing to try to stuff these clothes in the suitcase. Now the zipper's breaking. Now you might need a brand new suitcase, all right? Same thing applies to your body. But you don't get a brand new body. You stuck with this body for the rest of your life. But you keep stuffing in energy or carbs or glucose into the system that now some of your tissues is malfunctioning and now your ovaries is malfunctioning. If you're somebody who really wants to reverse your PCOS, is A, you need to start cutting out processed foods. What I would challenge you to do is go literally just one week without anything processed. Notice how they didn't say, oh, I want you to start doing a thousand burpees. Go a week without eating nothing processed. Hey, Trey, what is processed? If you can look at a label and you see more than 5 to 10 to 15 to 20 ingredients, it's processed. If you go to the store right now and pick up some blueberries, on the back, it's going to say blueberries. If you go to the store right now, pick up some broccoli, it's just going to say broccoli. When you're getting a broccoli casserole from Trader Joe's, oh, this is healthy. I'm just go ahead and eat it. But then if you look at the back and it says 30 different ingredients, is it really that healthy? These little things is going to cause your insulin levels to spike higher than if it was at its natural form or in its natural state. Broccoli is not going to spike your insulin levels as high as a broccoli casserole. French fries is going to spike your insulin higher than potatoes. On average, you need to keep your foods in whole form. So go a week without processed foods. Just see how you feel. And if you can, try to go a whole entire month. Now, a lot of people might think that's not sustainable, but what I want you to do is start focusing on prioritizing whole foods. If you want a potato, cool, have a potato. Just don't have fries. But if you're going to have a potato, make sure you don't have more potatoes, white carbs, and if it's white, that means it's starchy, then green carbs or yellow carbs or red carbs. They say have the color of the rainbow when you're eating your vegetables. You never see white, really. White is not part of the rainbow. Make sense? Now, two, if you're somebody who's really trying to get off the meds, another solution you could do is take berberine hydrochloride. It literally has the exact same effects of metformin. It's just more in a natural or holistic form. It has the same effect to your insulin levels as metformin. Now, metformin might be a little bit more effective because it's synthetic, but at the end of the day, berberine hydrochloride is going to do the exact same thing. Tip number three, you need to lower your insulin levels at all costs. And guess what's the best thing that's going to lower your insulin levels? Resistance training, <laughs> okay? The thing that gets rid of glucose the fastest in your body is not cardio. It's not orange theory. It's going to be you lifting a weight, okay? You lifting a weight that is stressful to your body to the point that you can only lift it 10 to 12 times max per set. If you focus on lifting weights, for a whole entire year and you come home from you lifting weights and you choose life's all about choices to eat right more whole foods have more proteins have some veggies and then you might have a snack a day but the snack that you choose is protein based which means that if you look at that label you see more protein in it than carbs i guarantee you if you do that for six months you're not gonna have pcos no more even though you might be genetically predisposed to have pcos it's reversible all because you're genetically predisposed to have something doesn't mean it's not going to happen. All because you're in the hood doesn't mean you're going to get robbed, you know? But at the end of the day, we all know, don't go to the hood at one o'clock at night and just chill on the corner. It doesn't make logical sense, all right? So hopefully y'all learned something today. That's your reset tip of the day. That's going to help you say snatch all the time, not the summertime. And hopefully with this information, we can drop the statistics and prevalence of PCOS in minority communities. Cool? Talk to you soon.